Hey guys, it's Cece and welcome to the final vlog for The Reading Rush. So I haven't been fully like daily vlogging. I have been doing mini vlogs, not a vlog for the full week, but vlogs for multiple days. It's my compromise because I've never daily vlogged before. Um, and it is currently day six of The Reading Rush, which means I have today and tomorrow to finish reading everything. Um, I have completed, if you haven't watched my other videos, three books so far, so haven't even completed, um, half, but it's fine. Um, so it's about 1am, that's a lie, it's about 2am, um, and I'm sitting on my couch because it is time to finish reading Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. Um, I have, according to, um, Bookly, the app I use, I have about 45 minutes left in this book, which is about uh, 60 pages, because these take a little bit longer to read, but I'm guessing I'm gonna speed through the end a little bit faster than I've read the rest of this book. It's generally how it goes. So I am going to sit here and I'm going to finish reading Call Down the Hawk. And then I'm gonna try not to completely lose it. Mm. Oh, I guess I could check in and see what the Instagram challenge is for today, because I haven't seen it yet. Haha, <laughs> we can get one Instagram challenge reaction in here, maybe. No, I don't want to see what Team Star Kid was doing. I mean, I do, but not right now. Challenge day six, take a photo of a book or books set in a different country than yours. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I like that this is a stack of books. Cool. I can definitely do that today. I think that that seems fun. Um, I haven't done the Instagram challenges for the last couple of days because I've been super busy, but I have loved seeing other people's Instagram posts. I think I didn't end up including this in my last vlog, but last night I was flipping through Instagram while recording and I saw Chandler's post. I'm gonna show it again now. Chan has the cutest cat and I am obsessed with this photo with the cat and with Chan. So, just wanted to say that, um, because I think that clip got cut, and I want that I want Chan to know that I'm obsessed with this photo. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to read. Oh my god. I did it. I did it. I finished reading it. Holy shit. And oh. Oh my god. That's basically my full entire review. That's that's it. That's my review. Um, that's pretty much all I can say. <laughs> when I read The Raven Cycle, I waited until they were all out before I read them. So I didn't have to wait between books. I just read them all at once and then waited a month and read them all again. And like, that's the best way to experience that series is being able to read it just one right after the other because there's so much inner like connecting them. And now that I'm experiencing a world where I have to wait between books, I hate it. I hate it already. I loved this book though. I gave it five stars. I fucking loved it. I'm not gonna calm down for the foreseeable future. Um, I'm gonna go to bed <laughs> and try to calm down. Hello, it is the evening and I just showered, hence the damp hair. Um, I'm gonna get it ready in a minute, but um, I didn't participate in La La's reading sprint. I was busy trying to finish a video that I have to get up to a um, sponsor today. So I didn't get to participate in the reading sprint, but I still really want to do the scavenger hunt that she did for her Twitter reading sprint. So I'm going to do that right now. I've got my bed all clean. That's where I'm going to put the books. And I'm going to pull up the reading sprints Twitter and see what the challenges were and create my own little scavenger hunt board so I still feel like I was able to participate. Um, I also spent today getting ready for my reading sprint which is going to be in a little under two hours um, and I've decided my theme is going to be fan fiction so we're going to be doing some like fan fiction themed questions. I'm pretty excited about it. I also still need to take my Instagram picture and I still haven't looked at the video challenge for today and I haven't read any books. So uh, it's we're working on it, we're working on it. Okay, so item number one was stars. Okay, next is upside down. I saw a lot of people do the upside of unrequited. I'm gonna see if I can find something actually upside down and if not, I'll do upside. Item number 
number three, the letter X. Oh, I know this one. Uh, number four, fire. Number five, a pretty font. Rain or snow. Okay. It's pretty easy. Uh, number seven, chaos. I'm gonna go with this because it feels a little chaotic, just like the front cover feels chaotic to me, so. Eight, a beverage. I'm gonna count this. It's kind of a beverage, it's kind of a snack. We're counting it. Okay, um, green. Your oldest book. I'm guessing it's this. Okay, number 12, an animal. East, easy. Um, oh, 11, an open mouth. I think all three of them have their mouths open, so there's that one. Number 13, free space, any book you want. My current read. I'm currently reading Black Wings Beating. Number 14, fruit or vegetable. Okay, yeah, it seems with the fire on high and prior the orange tree are the, are the top picks besides Twilight. Let's see if I can find something different. I went with the poison within, woo. Okay, number 15, joy. I think I'm gonna go with like the person on the cover is exuding joy. So let's talk about love. Is that for me? Number 16, space. Okay. 17, the number eight. I have an easy one for that, I guess. Um, number 18, stripes. Stripes. I'm gonna go with the subtle striping that's happening here. Number 19, a creature. A month or day of the week. I've been all over my shelves. I think the closest I'm getting is the fifth season, which I'm still counting as like a season instead of just days. I, I don't have anything that has a specific day of the week or month in it. <laughs> uh, 21 flowers. Woo, easy. Uh, number 22, wings. I already used black wings beating. Oh my God. Lots of wings. Okay. Uh, 23, your newest book. Pretty sure it's Wilder Girls. 24, Reflection. I think I'm gonna go with Long Way Down. There's a face kind of reflected. 25, a short title. Is this the last one? Yes. Short title, easy. Pet. Okay, so there is the final product. What do you guys think? What do you think of my choices? Did I do it? Did I not do it? Let me know. All right, I'm gonna hurry and get an update in here before it's Sunday, cause it is very nearly Sunday. Um, I did wind up taking a photo for the Instagram challenge. Here it is. Here it is, I did it. Um, I was pretty proud of it. I liked taking that photo, I thought it was fun. And I hosted reading sprints. It was incredibly stressful, which I knew it would be. Um, I was prepared for that. I've hosted reading sprints one time before. I did some sprints for Fall Into Fantasy, the readathon that I did in November. Um, I was more nervous for those. This time I knew better what I was doing. I used TweetDeck, which was nice. Um, and yeah, it went pretty well. I decided to go with the theme of fan fiction because I hadn't seen anyone use that theme in the reading sprints thus far and I still wanted to have a theme. I just think it makes it more fun to have some kind of theme to engage with while you're doing the sprint. And it makes it more fun to come up with prompts if you have a particular thing that you are theming your whole thing around. So that's what I did. 
Um, it was pretty awesome. I loved being able to chat with everybody. I loved so many responses and I didn't read a single page during Sprint because I decided after how incredibly stressful it was last November to try to read while hosting Sprints that it's just not very plausible to do that. So, didn't happen. Um, I did edit and get a video up to a sponsor, so hopefully they can watch that over and approve it. I'm really excited for people to see that video. And um, I'm sitting here and I just read a little bit of Black Wings Beating. I just barely started it. I'm about two chapters in, uh, which is about 30 pages, and it has a really weird concept of a society completely built around birds, which I think is interesting. Um, and I think that I th it's going to go fairly quickly. Based on how quickly I read the beginning, my reading app told me it's only going to take me about three and a half hours. So I'm doing something supremely ill-advised at midnight, and that is drinking a cup of coffee. Um, because I know myself well enough to know I'm going to do way better staying up all night reading than pretending I'm going to wake up early tomorrow and reading. And I have three books to get done, so... Um, that is my update for now. I never watched the video challenge. Me and video challenges, man. It's, it's like it worked one year and then every year after that it's just been this impossible thing that I always run out of steam for doing. But maybe, maybe I'll do the final one tomorrow. Um, so I'm gonna sit here, try to read more of Black Wings Beating, and then stay up forever. Um, and it is officially midnight, which means it is officially day seven of the reading rush. We did it. Welcome to the final day. Okay, so I stayed up late last night reading, um, and I got through a lot of Black Wings beating, and a little bit of My Life is an Ice Cream Sandwich, and I have bad news because I'm hating both of these books. Um, Black Wings beating I'm having problems with because it feels contrived like the entire book was written out in bullet points and then the author just wrote down anything that would get him to that point instead of writing I don't know in a way that felt authentic and I can't stand any of these characters they're all terrible I hate Bryson and Kylie's fine but I don't know I, I can't stand this um, and my life as an ice cream sandwich isn't going well because, I don't know, I don't think I like E.B. Zaboy's writing style because I didn't like her first book, American Street, but I thought maybe that was just a me thing with the story. And then I didn't like her story in Black Enough, but she's the editor. I never like the editor's story in an anthology. But I think this might be the final straw with E.B. Zaboy. I think it's time to call it and say that this author just isn't right for me. Um, that's making it a little difficult on this final day to finish both of these books, considering I can't stand them. It's really unfortunate. <laughs> um, I think it's going to take me about two hours each to finish these, and then I still have to read The Giver and watch The Giver. So it's going to be a long day, I think. We just watched The Giver and it was shit! It was really, really bad. It was I, shit! I, I, I can't. I can't. No! Friends, we have made it to the end of The Reading Rush 2019. And I have to say that somehow I pulled a success out of my ass and I managed to read my seventh book. Just a tiny, itty bitty past midnight. Just like enough that I'm counting it. So in the afternoon I read The Giver uh, by Lois Lowry originally with art by P. Craig Russell. Um, this was good. I liked it. I thought it was great to revisit this story again. In case you don't know, The Giver is like one of my favorite books of all time. I think it's the book I've reread the most times in my life. Um, and it was really cool to see it in a new format. I don't think that this brought necessarily anything new to the story. So to me, it doesn't have quite as much of an impact as the original does. So I wound up giving this four out of five stars. The original is a five out of five stars. I just think that there's a little bit more there, but I really loved this adaptation of the book. I thought it was a brilliant way to visualize a lot of the different stuff. Um, 
I thought it was fascinating, so I read that. Then we watched The Giver, which I have been avoiding for actual years because I thought the adaptation looked terrible. And I have to say I was right, at least as far as it being an adaptation of The Giver. It was a fine movie, um, it was not an adaptation of The Giver. It, they had to do way too much shit to that movie to make it like a big budget dystopian YA thing when that's not what it is. The whole thing that makes The Giver good is that it's quiet and that it's based on human interaction. And the movie took away those two things. It took away the quietness, it made it a big um, clusterfuck of drones or whatever, and it took away a lot of the human interaction that makes the world so interesting. Um, I think that there is sort of an intentionality in The Giver that it's not futuristic. Um, in fact, in the back of The Giver, the artist says that he went out of his way not to make it futuristic because nothing dates a story more than, than pretending to create a world that's futuristic. It's just gonna look bad in a few years. And so it was really unfortunate that that's the route they decided to go for the movie, and it's unfortunate that they decided to go the route of, like, what seemed like a love triangle, but not fully. It was bad that they aged up Jonas. Um, really the only thing I liked about the movie was Jeff Bridges. I thought he did a really good job. Uh, and that's about it. It was really weird that Taylor Swift was in the movie. <laughs> I forgot that she was cast because I blocked every element of that film from my memory. Um, then I finished reading Black Wings Beating by Alex London and I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Um, this was just really bad. Like, I'm sorry, but I hated every character in this book, and not in a they're an unlikable character way, but in a these are unrealistic, contrived, dumb characters. And the book spent so much time focusing on telling me how everyone felt that it never bothered to show it, and it was really frustrating. Plus, I can't stand world building that goes like a step too far, you know? Where it's like every single thing in the world has to have a different two word name where each one is capitalized and it's all tied to birds. Like, I got so sick of bird imagery after a while. I got so sick of the bird imagery. Uh, also, a thing that happens a lot with world building is that somehow it's a completely different world and yet there are still elements of Christianity that peek through. Like, disguising your Christmas as something not called Christmas does not make it less Christmas. It's, it's still Christianity in your world where people worship the sky. Uh. I'm not reading more of this series. I gave it two out of five stars. And then I finished reading My Life as an Ice Cream Sandwich, and I'm sorry that this is ending on a very negative note because I also hated this book. Could not stand it. I spent the last like five hours of the reading rush just forcing myself through two books I couldn't stand. This book might have been better if some things had maybe been confirmed or fleshed out with the main character. Um, because Ebony Grace read to me like someone who might be autistic, but it's never confirmed by the story in any way, shape, or form. So instead of it being like an interesting look at an autistic black girl in the 1980s, which I think is a fascinating story, instead it just reads like a petulant child who is supposed to be 12 but reads about 7. The adults are intolerable. The other characters are intolerable, and it comes to a conclusion in the last 20 pages out of nowhere. Plus, I don't understand how this can be a middle grade book, because even as someone who has a lot of Star Trek knowledge, I sometimes got lost in the Star Trek references, because I didn't see the Star Trek movies from the 80s, so I don't really understand how a middle grade audience is supposed to parse what's happening in this book. I gave it two out of five stars. Also not good. Oh, look who came to visit. Look who just came to visit. Oh. Butt scratches. And since this felt like a very negative way to end the Reading Rush update, I thought I'd tell you about some book mail I just got. Because I just got some book mail. Um, so I got two ARCs that I did like an ARC for trade thing on Twitter. Um, and then I have one that was sent to me from Amazon, but I'm not sure how. So the one from Amazon is Close to Spider-Man by Ivan E. 
uh, coyote and I, I this wasn't on my wish list and yet it like arrived like it was sent from my Amazon wish list so I'm not really sure how that works but um, it is a short story collection about queer women. Uh, it's from Martha, so thank you, Martha, because it came with a note. I'm curious about the short story collection, so that arrived. Um, and then the two other books I have are also about queer women. I got The Afterwards by E.K. Johnston. This is YA high fantasy about, I think, a pickpocket and a knight who become unlikely friends, but it's also a female-female romance. I got this uh, via Arcs for Trade, so that was pretty cool. Similarly, I also got This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amali Motar and Max Gladstone. This is like adult literary fiction. This is about two rival agents in a time war who begin corresponding and fall in love, and it is a female-female romance. Ever since I heard about this, I have been like dying, dying to read it. Um, and someone who wanted an arc I had happened to have an arc of this. So super excited to read this one as well. I'm probably gonna read it in August for arc August because I wanna read it. Um, but this is already out, I believe. Yeah, it came out in July. Um, but with that, we are going to wrap up the reading rush. I completed all seven challenges. Uh, the only badge I didn't get on the website was I didn't end up attending a read-in because the read-ins uh, were happening when my sister was over and there wasn't one near me and then I wasn't able to attend the online one either So there's that's only that's the only badge. I didn't get at any point um, But this has been an adventure. I'm exhausted. I'm beyond exhausted uh, But I'm still really proud of what I got done over seven days I did four different Instagram posts a few different video challenges. I read seven books it was super awesome. Thank you very much for following me along if you have. Um, if you participated in the reading rush, please let me know if you completed the challenges, if you didn't, if you had fun. If you didn't uh, participate in the reading rush, I hope that you had fun watching these vlogs and watching some other daily vlogs from other awesome booktubers. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!